And welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to do this fun loving little raccoon ornament. Now this ornament if you follow the directions exactly will be about seven inches tall. You can see by my hands it's a fair size. In today's tutorial I will be substituting my yarn and my hook size so mine is going to be more like a plushed animal. But this is the interesting thing about crochet. Change one element and then it changes your entire look today. So let's uh, go over the basics of doing this and what you're going to need in order to start your little raccoon ornament right now. So let's start with the directions. You're going to need a size 4 millimeter or a size G crochet hook to, in order to do this today. You're going to need four colors of yarn. We have the gray. We also have um, off-white which is in the nose and the eyes and part of the mitts. We also have black which is obvious where it is here and then we have a wine color which is part of the little baby mitts that go on this. So you just need four colors. You do not need a lot of anything other than the gray. The gray you know even though this is not very big you don't need a lot of gray either. So if you have some stash at home maybe your raccoon is not even gray. It could be another fun loving color. It can be really interesting in order to do it. You're also going to need a pair of eyes. These are safety eyes so those you can pick up at a craft store and I think that's about it. We're going to need some stitch markers in order to do it. I'm going to show you a way to be able to keep count without a stitch marker because if you have yarn you already have a stitch marker. So let's uh, start right now. We're going to start as the instructions go from top to bottom and this is going to be a lot of fun. So sit back, relax and let's crochet a raccoon together. To start today we're going to do the body and the head and the body and the head are one unit. So if you turn around you can see that there's no sewing. It just goes from one shape to another transitioning through the neck. So let's uh, begin. Grab your yarn. We're going to start with grain first and then start along and I'm going to show you how to keep count of your rounds as you go around and around. To start today you're going to need another piece of string about 15 inches long and it must be longer than the body and the head combined because we're going to use this to measure our rounds as we go around. So we're going to start off with uh, doing uh, an adjustable ring. An adjustable ring allows us to pull the ring nicely and tight when it comes to the body and essentially just put it in the front of your hand so it comes down like so. Just, just use two fingers and just wrap it over top of your two fingers and have it cross right at the front point right here. Now what we want to do is just insert your hook underneath the first one, grab the second just like so and then grab that yarn again and pull through and that will secure it onto the ring. And so essentially here is your ring. So to begin we just need to do six single crochets right into the center of this ring. So we're going to go one and you'll notice that the ring is really big at this point and the ring is a, it likes to fumble around a little bit so we want to make sure you're just taking your time because you just got to get past this part in order for it to ease up. So that's two. This is three. This is four. Five. And six. And I just want you to pull this up a little bit because what I want you to do is that I want you to insert your hook right underneath where this is coming out of. And what I want you to do is grab that secondary yarn that I had you put aside and pull it through there. So just pull a section through there and that will indicate that is the last stitch of the round. When we're working on this we do never we never do any slip stitching so when you see the raccoon when it's turned all the way around you'll never see where you've stopped and started your rows. And this helps you keep that indication. So let's put the loop back onto the hook and now this string that you see here that's just holding you're just going to pull everything tight and that'll make the perfect starting circle. Just leave that for now and we're going to secure that as we go all the way around. So round number one just like so it's been completed. Let's start on round number two. It says work two single crochets into each one all the way around. We simply need to come to the very first one here. Okay so you just reach over and we want to just single crochet in twice. So one and two and then the next one one and two and then one and two and because you have six underneath you should end up with 12 single crochet by the time you're done if you're putting two into each one if there's six underneath. And two and so that where this marker is now there this is your last stitch so you do got to use that one and put in your two single crochet and once you get that second one in just like I did I want you to just to pull up a loop and we're going to do this every time you go around. Pull up a loop and grab this yarn 
and just pull it through. By the time we're done this project, this yarn will be worked all the, in and out all the way up through your raccoon and it will show you exactly where you are on your stitch. So if you've done it right, you should have two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve, and we are good to go to move to round number three. In round number three, it's asking for us to two single crochet into the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next and keep repeating that all the way around. So the very first single crochet we run into, it's going to be two, so one and two. The next one is going to be by itself, so just one single crochet. Okay, so you got this one is two, so one and two. The next one is by itself for one. So this one's two. And one, and then we have two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one. And I can tell that I finished this off properly because the fact is, is that when I finished off, when I started off, I started immediately at two, and now I'm finishing off with one pull up and just now just switch over, going from the front side, just like so, pull that yarn through again. And that'll indicate that you're done row number three. Let's begin round number four. It says two single crochet into the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next two single crochets. So the first one is going to be two and then the next one is going to be by itself. So one single crochet and the next one is going to be by itself. So just like it's following. So the next one is going to be two single crochets together and the next one is going to be single crochet and the next one is single crochet. So the next one is two single crochets together and then the next two are single crochet each. Okay, so now we have two together and then one in by itself and one by itself. Okay, two together. The next one is by itself and by itself. The two together and then the next two are by itself and you see where the stitch marker is here that is the last stitch and you can tell I've done it right because the last one should be the second single crochet by itself. So what we need to do now is just come in from the back side just grab this stitch marker again and just pull it through there just like so and you can see that we're starting to move up on it. So that completes round number four. Moving up to round number five, we have two single crochet in the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next three single crochets. So let's begin. We're, the first one is going to be two single crochets into the same one and now the next three are going to be by itself. So one single crochet, one single crochet, one. Okay, the next one is two. So one and two and the next three are by themselves. One, two, and three. Okay, the next one is two together. So one and two. And then the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next one are two together. So one and two. And the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next two are together. One, and two, and then the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. Next two are together, or next one is together. So there's two in there. And then finally, again, the last three that you have, see how the stitch marker follows on that three? We know we're still following it properly at this point then. So the last three are by themselves. And again at the end, just insert your hook, pull the marker through. Just like so, and you are good to go, and that was round number five. Moving along to round number six, we have two single crochets into the next single crochet, and then single crochet into the next four single crochets. So it's very easy. So the first one is going to be one and two. So do you get what we're saying with the pattern? Because maybe I don't need to take you all the way around. So the next four are by themselves. Three and four. 
So that means that, that we've got our four in, so the next one is two together, and then the next four are by themselves. So continue that same pattern all the way around, four single crochets in a row, two together, four single crochets in a row, two together, and continue to do that all the way around till we meet back up at the stitch marker once again. So I've just finished up round number six. I've already moved it up my stitch marker, very easy to tell. Now rounds number seven to 18 are all identical with each other. All we just need to do now is just a single crochet and we're gonna go around and around. Every time you pass that stitch marker, count it as a round and move it up. And we are gonna go from seven to 18. So when we come back in just a moment, I will have all 18 rounds done. So continue single crochet all the way around and around and around until you hit rows number 18. And we'll meet back up where we're gonna start number nine next. And I'm back and now I have finished all 18 rounds. So 7 to 18 was just completed and as you can see I moved up my stitch marker as I carried it along. And now it's time for round number 19. Now 19 we're going to start coming in at the neck area and it says uh, single crochet two together, single crochet into the next four stitches. So let's begin. So the first two stitches are going to be two together. So we come right in to the first, grab the yarn, pull through and then we go into the second one, grab the yarn, pull through. And so you'll have three left on your crochet hook and you're just gonna grab the yarn and now pull it through all three. Now as per the instructions, it says single crochet into the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And now we're gonna do the two together again. So how do we do that again? Is in, pull through, go into the next one, pull through, and then pull through all three, and that is a two together single crochet, and so then four. So one, two, three, and four. And one last time, and then you just carry on with the same pattern. So go along, go in, pull through, in, pull through, and together, and now the next four, and carry on along all the way to the stitch marker. Meet back up, we'll move on to round number 20. I've gone all the way around and your last stitch will be the four. So one, two, three, and four. I've moved up my stitch marker already and now let's move along to round number 20. It says single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next three. So again, it's just like we started. So just make sure that when you start, you just pull this nice and tight and we go into the first one, pull through, second one, pull through. We're gonna do two together here again and pull through. And so the next then three are by themselves. So one, two, and three, and now we're gonna do two together again. So in, pull through, in, pull through, and pull through all three. And carry on along doing that same thing all the way around. So we just review one more time. So in, and in, pull through all three, and again, three single crochets in a row. Let's meet back up at the stitch marker again and move on to round number 21. Okay, round number 20 is now complete and the final stitch is one, two, three, the singles by themselves and that'll take you to the stitch marker and again, move up your stitch marker again. So round number 21 says single crochet two together and single crochet the next two single crochets. So the first one is two together as like we've already done. And so then the next two single crochets will be single crochet each and then two together again. So carry along doing that all the way around, just repeating that pattern. So two together and then two single crochets by themselves and meet back up at the stitch marker in just a moment. Okay, round number 21 is complete. You can see that it's starting to really pull in together. That's perfect, it's exactly what you're needing to do. So that was round number 21 complete. Moving along to round number 22 and 23, we are simply now going to just go around like we did before, just single crochet into every stitch all the way around. So go around a couple times until, so this will be round number 21, sorry, round number 22 and 23, single crochet into each. And as you pass the stitch marker, please check that off as a round. So we'll meet back up after round number 23 is done. Round numbers 22 and 23 are now complete. The stitch marker has been moved up and we're ready for round number 24. It says two single crochets in the next single crochet and then single crochet in the two single crochets. So we're just gonna be going like we did in the bottom. We're getting bigger now. This is the smallest part of the neck area and we're starting to make room now for the head. So the first one is gonna have two single crochets and then the next one, next two single crochets by themselves is one each. So it's just like we've done, been doing. So the next one is two singles 
and then the next one, will, uh, next two are singles by themselves. So carry along doing that all the way to the stitch marker, lead back up and start round number 25. Okay, round number 24 is now complete. The stitch marker is moved up. If you're doing it right, you will have ended up with two single crochets together and then one and two by themselves. And now let's move along to round number 25. It says to two single crochets into the next stitch, single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you're going to want to place a stitch marker on this round for the placement of the nose. So I would grab this yarn color again, just a little piece of it. And when I'm about halfway around, I would mark that with a stitch marker. So let's uh, begin. So the first one is two singles together and then three by themselves. So one, two, and three. Okay, two singles together like that. And then one, two, and three. And I'm keeping an eye where that stitch marker is. I'm going to do it one more time. So there's going to be two in this stitch. And then one, and then two, and three. And what I would do is then grab another piece of yarn at this point and let's put a stitch marker in there. Do a different color yarn so that you're not confused on which is your stitch marker and what is the nose. So I'm just going to grab some purple here and just right in this stitch here, I'm just going to put in a place marker. If you have stitch markers, you can use that as well if you prefer. I always lose the stitch marker, so yarn I never seem to lose. So I'm pulling out through just a loose, just like this. So I know that this is the level of where the nose is going to go. So I'm just reviewing back. So I got my thing one, two, and three. And so we again start with putting two together again. In the same, or two singles in the same stitch. And then one into the next three. One two and three carry along to do that same configuration all the way back to the stitch marker and that was row number 25. So we're finished now round number 25 let's move along to round number 26 it says two single crochet in the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next four single crochets so it's just like before we want to put in two into the first one and then four in a row so one two three and four and then put in two again and then the next four by themselves again. So continue along that same configuration and let's finish up round number 26 moving on to round number 27 next. Round number 26 is now complete. Stitch markers moved up. Let's move on to round number 27. It says to two single crochet into the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next five single crochets and place a stitch marker on this round for the placement of the nose. So essentially what we're going to be doing is that on this side here, this is the bottom of the nose and then when we come all the way around, we're going to be also doing that in the top of the nose so that we know exactly where it is. So when we get back around there, what we want to do is place a stitch marker right over top. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So let's just start and you can place the nose on yourself. So the first one is going to be two single crochets into the same and then we're going to have five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and so then the next one is two. So when you get to the nose area, get the same color of yarn, and then you're going to know where the top and bottom of your nose will be. So we're just finishing up round number 27. I did mark my nose, so you now can see the top and the bottom. And now we're back up in the front. Stitch marker is just has to be moved up in just two seconds here. And again, you see the importance of moving the stitch marker. It keeps you really balanced so that you don't start second questioning yourself just in case that you think, hmm, maybe I didn't get it all the way down. You can see your trail pretty well following up and down. So moving along to round number 28, says two single crochets into the next single crochet and then sing, uh, single crochet into the next six. So let's do the two in the beginning. And then what we're going to be doing is six by itself. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then put two together again and then six in a row. You will notice on this pattern that the head of this raccoon is a lot bigger in dimension wise than it is on the body for the, for the size of the, of, I guess the ball of the head. So just letting you know that's why you're doing more um, going uh, two together on this one than you were on the body. So let's move along, uh, continue that same pattern all the way around. Remember it's uh, two together and then six single crochet in a row. 
Okay, round number 28 is now complete. Stitch marker is moved up and now ready for round number 29. It says two single crochet into the next single crochet and then a single crochet into the next seven. So remember the first one. So you're probably really understanding this pattern at this point. And so the next seven will be single crochets by themselves. And then you'll go two in a, together again and then seven. So carry along doing that same pattern all the way around. We'll meet back up and begins rounds number 30 to 32. So moving up the row, we've now finished number 29 and now it's time to do three more rows. So we have 30, 31, and 32. Each one of these rounds is just a single crochet each. However, on round 30, which is the one we're just about to do right now, I want you to come along when we come to the front, grab another piece of yarn color and we're going to be marking uh, the eye patch. If you didn't look at the raccoon's eye patch, you'll notice it has black and white. We need to mark this round as we're coming all the way around just somewhere on either side of the particular nose area and that'll indicate to us where we should be placing the eye patch and this is the bottom section. So again single crochet for rounds number 30 to 31, 32 and then in this round number 30 please mark uh, the eye patch location and just choose another color yarn so that you can find it later at this point. So I'll meet you back up after we have these three rounds complete. And we're back and now rounds number 30 to 32 are now complete and on the other side I marked with the blue where the eye patches are going to start on this particular head. So let's uh, move along to round number 33. It's now time to start bringing everything back to the top of the head. We now have the full thickness of the head and now it's time to go and narrow in at the top. We want to do two single crochet together so single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next seven single crochets. So let's uh, begin. So we're going to do the together again. So wrap and pull through, wrap and pull through just like so and now pull through all three and now the next seven are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And let's review one more time. It's going in. We're decreasing at this point. We're doing two together. Going into the next pull through. We have three loops on the hook and then just like so. So continue that same configuration. A single crochet two together and single crochet into the next seven all the way around to the stitch marker. We'll move up to round number 34 next. Okay, round number 33 is now complete. Stitch marker is moved up. Let's go into round number 34. Again, very easy. Single crochet the next two together just like you have been doing. And now the six uh, single crochets will be in a row. So instead of seven this last time, it's now six. So continue that same pattern going all the way around and then meet back up at the stitch marker. Move on to round number 35 next. Round number 34 is now complete, ready to move up. The stitch marker is moved. Here we go, round number 35. Here we go, single crochet two together just like so and now the next five will be by itself and it says to place this a stitch marker on this row for the top level I'm I'm substituting the word top level for the top level of where the eye patch will be so when you get around to the eye patch area place two more uh, stitch markers and right above where you're doing so that you know where those are when you get around so just to review this one this is round number 35 single crochet two together and single crochet five in a row after that point so Continue that and mark, make your stitch markers and we'll meet back up and move on to round number 36 together. Okay, I've now finished up round number 35. You can see it looks pretty hairy. <laughs> it looks pretty scary at this moment. Love it. <laughs> so round number 35 is completed. Mark my eye patches. Now ready for round number 36. Round number 36 says single crochet two together and single crochet into the next four. So we're still continuing to decrease. So let's put two together to start off with and then the first four or one, two, three, and four, and again two together. Just like so. Continue that same pattern all the way around to the stitch marker and we'll move on to round number 39 or 37 next. Okay, round number 36 is now complete, ready for round number 37. Very simple, this round is completely single crochet all the way around. And when we're going to be starting to stuff this very shortly, it says to give the instructions to stuff it near the end of doing this, but I'd be inclined to do it prior to getting that far, and I would probably do it in the next couple rounds. So that's just single crochet all the way around, and meet back up at the stitch marker, and move on to round number 38 together. 
Okay, round number 37 is now complete and if I were you, I would start now getting your stuffing just like so. Let's pull a generous hook size and begin to stuff this. Now if you're doing the smaller size version as it's requiring in the pattern, it says to stuff firmly and in the sample that we have which is the smaller version, you can see the huge difference size of what I've done by changing the hook. <laughs> We've gone from like a little uh, teeny weeny uh, little raccoon here to <laughs> the mother of all raccoons. And so what you want to do is because my stitch counts are, are, our hook is different, it's not as tight. So when I'm doing this one, if you're doing the normal size, it has to stuff firmly because you won't see the stuffing through it. But because mine has a bigger hook, if you overstretch it, you're going to see the foam through it as well. So you want to make sure that when you're stuffing it, just uh, keep an eye on it and make sure you don't overstuff it, but you don't want it to be flimsy either. So go ahead and start stuffing at this point and we'll meet back up. You're going to stuff it till you get to about to the top here and then we're going to carry on and finish off the head area after that. Okay, moving along to round number 38, we're going to single crochet two together and then single crochet three in the next one. So the first two are together, two together just like so, and then the next three are by themselves. Carry on all the way through. When we get to a more narrower spot, we're going to finalize how much stuffing that we have in our little raccoon at this point. And you can see my stitch marker has been following all the way up and we're going to pull that out after this has all been assembled and completed uh, when we get this part of the body done. So continue to do that. So what it is, two single crochet together and then three single crochet on their own in a row. Okay, round number 38 is now complete, ready for round number 39 and it says single crochet two together and single crochet in the next two. So the first two are together to bring it more closer and then the next two are by themselves for a single crochet each. Because I now have stuffing in my raccoon, it's harder to kind of show you to bend him in a certain way, but it's a lot easier when it's in front of you. So again, what we have is single crochet two together and then single crochet in the next two. Carry that all the way around and we're going to start wanting to pay attention now if you have enough room to put more stuffing into your character to finish him off so that he's looking pretty fabulous. Finishing up row number 39 together, we're ready now for round number 40. It says to single crochet two together and single crochet into the next only. So the first one, we're going to bring it together and you're going to notice this is really going to pull it tight at the top. So the first two are together and then single crochet and then two together again. So continue that same configuration all the way around. I did add more stuffing in between the last take and this one. Again, you really want to make sure there's enough in here. You will find that your crochet stitches tend to stretch over time and what happens is if that it's loosey-goosey now, it'll be loosey-goosey when you're done with this project because it'll relax a little bit. So you want to make sure that you're applying enough into your project that, but not too much that it's going to be making it look like it's bloated. <laughs> I hate that word by the way. So let's move on, round number 40, single crochet crochet two together, <laughs> single crochet into the neck, sorry about that. <laughs> so to finalize round number 41, this is your final one of this whole thing, but it looks like there's a big hole, isn't it? So what we have here, it says single crochet two together six times and basically we're just every two is going in together in one. And then what we're going to do then is that we are going to slip stitch into all of the different um, single crochets and we're just going to use that like a clothesline and pull the top shut. So let's uh, begin. I'm just going to show you again single crochet two together just like so and then again the next two are going to be together and then I'll show you how to fasten this off so that you have a nice flat top as far as the head is concerned. And for the second half of row number 41, simply I've gone all the way around. So just, I've already trimmed my yarn. So I'm just pulling up on the hook so that it pulls it all the way through, just like you see there. And now I have my yarn strand just like so. And I want to grab my darning needle and insert it on. And essentially I want to collect the, the single crochets that are in each one of them. So I just continue to go to the next kind of like whip stitch around and it's going to be like a clothesline. You're just picking up every one. Okay, continuing to pick up every one as you go around like so. And when you get back to the very beginning, all you're just going to do now, see how you're just going to put your fingers down and pull and that pulls the tight, uh, top tight, just like you see. Make sure you did have enough stuffing in there now that I tell you and make sure it's all good and we want to tie a knot at the top. Okay. 
I was thinking you could always put hair on this little character too. It'd be kind of cute. Okay, so let's um, finalize off the knot. I'm trying to make sure that red's not getting stuck in there. And then what I just do then for myself, this is what I normally do, is that I take the yarn and then I just go into the body and come out somewhere else. It doesn't matter where you go out. Again, keeping that red out, kind of pull it out like this. And then I grab my scissors and I just trim way over here because then you know that that loose end will be nice and hidden as you go. And so now what we need to do is just pull out the stitch marker that we left in and voila, you have the head and ready. <laughs> Pretty scary, I know, but there is the head and the body of your new raccoon seen to be. So if you turn it around, you get a better glimpse of it at that point. We're now ready to start the next portion of the pattern and we're going to do the nose. The black here in the nose is done afterward. You're actually embroidering that on. So basically the entire nose from tip to the face area is all going to be the same color and then, then we're going to come back and put in the black afterward. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off with an adjustable ring just how we started the base of the body. Again, it's just in front of your hand just like so coming up over the hand and crossing over at the front just like you see there. Grabbing underneath the first one, this one and now grabbing the other one again and pulling it through just like you see there. So it says work six single crochets uh, into the ring and do not uh, join because we're going to be doing this exactly how we did the body where we're going to do a continuous round all the way around. So pulling everything a little bit snug, keeping this ring nice and open and just single crochet six times. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like so. And now let's pull everything all, all, all nice and tight. So nice and tight there. And what I would strongly recommend is that even though this is just a small portion of the project, let's get a stitch marker up anyway, because we're going to need to count how many revolutions that we're doing around this nose. So again, just put in your stitch marker. Just really helps you keep count as you're going around and that'll complete off the first round here of doing the nose. Okay, round number two is very simple. We just want to come all the way to the very first one over here and it says to two single crochet in the single crochet and then single crochet in the next two. So we're going to end to do that all the way around. So we're just going to come immediately to the very first one here and we're going to put in two single crochets into that one. Because it is a different shape of the body, you should not expect the stitches to be the same amount of counts. So the next two single crochets are going to be by themselves. And now the next one is going to be two together. So there's going to be two in this one. Okay. And now the next two are by them, uh, next two are by themselves. And again, we've already got the stitch marker just like we've done in the last one. Let's move up that stitch marker to make it easier to count. And because my stitch is our, um, I'm using such a bigger hook than I should be, my nose is going to be a lot bigger, but so is the body that I have going on anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to round number three and I do apologize for laughing in the last part. Um, I'm comparing my raccoon to being, <laughs> to being Godzilla in my brain and it's just making me laugh and I do apologize about that. So round number three, it says two single crochets in the next single crochet and then a single crochet in the next three. <laughs> I, wanna, I don't want any outtakes. So the first one is going to be um, two in the same and then the three by themselves. <laughs> and three. And the next one is going to be two into the same one. And the next three are going to be by themselves again. So one, two, and three. And that takes me right back to the start. Now this is just my own personal preference. When I'm going in circles, I don't like to, to go that I'm on the opposite side of a, of, like if this was a cereal bowl. I, so I just want to flip it now so that I'm always working on the outside, going around the outside and not going over a project like I was. So that just makes it easier for myself to uh, follow along. So let's move along to round number four next. Round number four is very easy again. Two single crochets in the next single crochet and then single crochet in the next four. So again, immediately starting up for the first one is two into the same one, one and two. And now the next four are by themselves. So one. 
So we really are growing this like a cone if you haven't already picked that idea up yet in your head. Okay, and next uh, one is two together. There's going to be two in that one. And then the next four are going to be by themselves. So one, two, three, and four. And we're back at the stitch marker again. See, doesn't that really help you, those stitch markers, to know that you know you're doing a good job? <laughs> I tell you, you I try not to sometimes I get lazy and then I realize I should because I'm only making it harder for myself. Let's move along to round number five next. Round number, round number five is your last round. It says two single crochets in the next single crochet and single crochet in the next two single crochets. So this is slightly different again. And again, this is going to help it make it more rounded off too. So the first one is going to be one and two together. And then it's going to be two singles, one in a row. Okay, so the next one is two together. So there's going to be two into the same stitch. And then the next two will be by themselves. And the next one is two together. And then two by themselves. Okay, two together. And the next two, which ends up taking you right back to the start, which is good. And what we want to do at the very end is that we want to join with the slip stitch with the first single crochet. So we're just going to join now. And what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to trim this yarn. And we want to trim it long enough that we can use that to be able to sew it to the front of this uh, character. So I'm going to cut that nice and generously. I'm not going to put it onto my raccoon right yet. I'm going to start collecting all my parts so that I can do it all at the same time. But I need to go back now and start to uh, put some black around the front of this nose. And we're going to do that through embroidery next. So after you cut your yarn and you want it to have a nice length so that you can use it. So just pull it out like this and then that is ready done. The string is then ready to sew on. You can now safely pull out your stitch marker use that for something else and now it's time to embroider the nose so you'll need a darning needle for this particular point of the project. We're ready now to sew on the snout and basically I'm just going to get my black yarn ready and I simply just want to go to the halfway point and so I'm just going to grab the other end of this just like so and I want to tie this into a knot together. The reason why I'm doing that is that when you embroider Sometimes that you don't have to pay that much attention to it if you have double the yarn. So I'm going to have this stay as a slip knot on the other side. And what I want to do then is that I want to come in and the first round that we started off with, I want to come in on the outside of the very first round, just right there. And I want to go back through the center point and through. And when I come back through, what I want to do is that I want to capture this around the slip knot, just like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to hold the yarn on the inside of the, the nose so you, that you'll never see the stop at starting point. I want to make sure I get all my yarns out of the way. And now pull it nice and snug. So this, all this leftover yarn will be on the inside. So simply don't want to pull it too tight. But now that I've gone on in the inside, what I want to do is I want to come out another part of the nose and back through the center and continue to do that all the way around so that you don't see any white on the end of the snout. And don't be too tight with it. You want it to kind of be a little bit generous and you might have to play around with it in order to get it to look right as well. So just have some patience and do that off camera and I'll be back in just a moment and we'll move on to the next part of this tutorial. So the next part of this tutorial, we're going to work on the eye sockets, just like you see these are the eye patches and you need to make two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make one and then you can make the other one on your own. You're going to need string for both of them. So at the end, when we're done the black, you're going to have to leave on a long tail so that you can sew it carefully to this. If you leave it and only do one, like you can actually see that the white is being sewed into the head here. But if you go all the way around the white, you're going to see white under here. So when we're in the black section, sewing it to the, the head, just like so, we want to use the black string that we're going to leave on extra. And then the same thing with it goes with the, the white at the top. So let's uh, begin the eye patches next. And again, you need to make two. 
Okay, with the black, you want to start off and you're gonna do a total of ch six chains. Remember that the first slip stitch or slip knot, just like so, it never counts as one. So it's a begin, so we're gonna chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it says work two single crochets into the second chain of the hook and then single crochet into the next three chains and then two single crochets in the last. So the first one is that we're gonna come second. I know this is black, but it's the second one over. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna grab it from the back side. So I know it's very difficult to see, but in the rules of crochet, you always see two front stitches and then there's always a back bump. I'm gonna come in through the back bump to make a really nice finish on this. And so I'm gonna do two single crochets into the very first one as it says. And then it says to do um, single crochet into the next three. And I'm continuing on the back, just like this. So one in each. And then it says at the end, two single crochets in the last before turning to move up to the next row. So this is all row number one. So the last one is gonna be two in a row. And you will see that the eye patch has a drooping look to it, but that's as per the photograph as well. Let's move along to the rows number two and three. Rows two and three are very quick and simple. You're just simply going to turn your work, chain up one, and then single crochet in each stitch and then to the end, and then just do that again. So just coming into the first one, one single crochet into each. How easy is this? It's the body that really takes all the work and then finally into the last single, just like this. And we wanna turn our work and redo that one more time. So chaining up one and one single crochet into each. This is the reason why I never use black in the videos. It's kind of really tough to see your stitches, but you have to trust in yourself at the same time. So at the end, we want to fasten this off, but we want to leave enough yarn in the final one so that we can use that to sew in. So just leave a very generous length that you know that you can sew all the way around in order to put it onto your head. And as soon as you cut that, we are going to just pull it loop through like so and let's begin to do the next uh, row up. And what I want you to do is that I just want you to bring the loop through and just do it again twice, just to really secure that through. And what I want to do now is that we are gonna attach then uh, the next uh, color, which will be the off-white, to do the final row, uh, row across. Okay, where the tail is coming off for the black, that's where we're gonna work. We're just gonna grab our new one here, the white yarn, and you can just leave the straggler down on top if you wish in order to trap it in a, pos a position. It says to chain one, let's do chaining one, so I've already fastened on chain one, two single crochets in the first single crochet, single crochet into the next six, and then slip stitch in the very last one here, and this makes it really slick. So coming into the very first one, we want to do two singles. And I'm just gonna pull everything nice and tight, leaving this straggler down on top. And it says to single crochet into the next six. So one, two, and then three, and then four, and then five. And this is working out perfectly. And six, just like you see here, and slip stitch in the last stitch. So we're just gonna go into the very last stitch available grab the yarn, pull it through and through. And when I go to remove this off the, to the ball, I just wanna have this out as well for an extra length because we're gonna use that for sewing that in afterwards. So just grabbing the yarn and pulling it through like so. Don't worry about these loose ends right now. We'll just tuck them up underneath into the face uh, when we get started. So I just need to start just continuing to make another one of these and then we can move on to the pause next. So make, please make two of these. And I wanna leave this black one here so that I know which one is bottom just in case I get confused at any point. Okay, it's time now to move along and we're gonna do the paws next. And the paws are done separately from the mitts, so you would think that they were done together. They're not. And uh, just a very easy, quick process in order to do each. So I'm gonna show you one and you do the other on your own. So with A, which is the gray color, obviously it matches the raccoon, we want to make another adjustable ring. And again, it's just like we've done it before. So I'll leave that to you to do that. 
making it harder than it really is. So we have our adjustable ring just like so, and it says to work six single crochets into the ring and do not join, because we're gonna do a single, um, we're just gonna go all the way around. So one, two, and three, This is four, five, and six. And now we want to pull on the string and make it complete, just like so, and move along to round number two to nine. To make it easier for you, I want you to get another stitch marker, and in the last stitch that we just did, I want you to put on a stitch marker so we can count. And the rows number two to nine are just very simple. There's no headache about it at all. We simply just have to start into our very first one and go around nine times. So just one single crochet into each, going all the way around and every time you pass the stitch marker just move it up like you've done with the body and that would be how you complete the paw. So let's me back up, we'll finish off the paw. You do the second one on your own using the same principles you're learning right now. So every time you get around, these won't take very long. We're on there, this is that very same stitch there and essentially we just have to move it up as you go. So continue to do rows two to nine on your own. Okay, when you get the end of doing your first paw, just pull up on the yarn just like so and use that to be able to sew it to there. This is obviously a very generous length. You do not need to stuff your paw at all because of how tight it is, it maintains itself and you can pull out your stitch marker at that point. When you're doing the second paw, I would cross compare to make sure that the lengths are perfect and that their thicknesses are perfect as well. If you're off by one stitch, you'll notice that one paw may be thicker than the other. So carry along and we're gonna start up the next part after this, which will be the feet, but please make one more of these before you continue. Okay, we're now ready to start the feet and if you look in the instructions, it says work same as rounds one to three in the paws and join with a slip stitch at the, be at the first single crochet to end the round number three. So again with the paws, we're just doing um, the adjustable ring as normal to begin. So this pattern has a lot of rep uh, repetitive ideas, so it makes it very easy. So again, we want to single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, and five, and six, just like so. And now we're gonna pull that nice and tight again. So that concludes round number one. And so we want to go in a continuous spiral again. If it makes it easier, I think I'm not going to bother to put in my stitch marker at this particular point. I only have to go around three times. This is already round number one done. So we just have to go around two more times. And essentially you just put in one single crochet into each, or sorry, one single crochet into each one going all the way around. So essentially you're doing like a paw, but you're just doing a, a stubbier version of it and just go around three times, do two of those, and then your feet will be complete for this particular um, project at this point. And at the end, please leave yourself a nice generous tail because you'll be using that to sew it to the bottom of the body afterward. When you get to the last round, again, you're just gonna use that tail as the sewing to the body. And then essentially you don't have a lot of space in here, but you're gonna wanna grab some additional stuffing. At this point, it says to stuff firmly. And again, the same rules apply because I am using a thicker hook that I don't want to overstuff and make it look like it's too bloated. But this will keep the feet from uh, collapsing in on itself. So obviously I got too much there. But you want to do two of those and please stuff those and put those aside for when we're ready to do the assembly of this particular raccoon. So just like you see. And of course you can always add more stuffing when you go to sew it if it's not puffing enough for you. So there is that. Please make two of these. So it's now time to start doing the ears and the black part of the ears are embroidered on just like we did with the nose. Very uh, quick and easy and essentially you can see how it's attached just like so. So let's uh, begin doing the ears next, grabbing the gray material that you've been using for the body. Let's uh, make an adjustable ring like we've been showing you all along. So let's uh, begin, it says uh, work six single crochet into the ring, do not join a continuous spiral. You're gonna want to do your um, slip marker or stitch markers again. So we're just doing six single crochets to start. This is four, this is five and six. So just pulling up, I wanna put in a stitch marker. 
it's kind of way too big for the ears, but that's okay. It's spare yarn. I can trim it if I need to and simply just put into the very last stitch. Like so, let's tighten everything back up and just grabbing the gray that we started off with. Let's pull it all nice and tight and that will be the top of the ear. And off camera, I'm going to trim down this uh, uh, pink as well so it's easier to follow along. Okay, rounds two and three are very simple. The first uh, stitch you're going in, we are simply going to do a single crochet for rounds three and four. So just to continue to do that, every time you hit the stitch marker, just count it as one. So single crochet around twice. Okay, we're rounds four and five. If you see the direction, it says work as the same rounds as two and three of the nose. So we need to go back to rounds two and three of the nose area. It says two single crochet, so this is going to be for round um, four that we have going on. So this is what it says, a two single crochet into the next single crochet and then single crochet into the um, two next. So that we're going to do one and two to the first and then the next two single are going to be two single crochets by themselves. So one and two and this is growing the ear then to be more of a cone shape. So then the next one just like so is going to be two two in the same stitch and then the next two are going to be by themselves. And when you get that done, we just want to finish that up. We just want to get the stitch marker to move up a bit so that we can see exactly where the end is. And remember what it said that um, the rounds two and three are of the nose. So then round number three is two single crochet into the next and then single crochet into the next three. So we're going to start off immediately. And the first one is going to be two single crochets in one and two and then the next three are going to be solos so they're going to be three one in each of the next three and we want to do that all the way around to the stitch marker once again so continue to do that oh we're actually almost done so the next one is going to be two and so then the next three are by themselves so one two and three Oops, <laughs> got ahead of myself. I want to move up that stitch marker so I know where I am. Just like so. So I've now finished up the, the nose area from what it's asking. Let's continue to review. So we're just finishing up round number five. All we have to do, to do now is join with the slip stitch to the beginning and we're going to use that gray then as the sewing to it. Now I notice in the instructions it says you don't have the, there's no mention of doing um, stuffing of the ear. You can if you want to, um, just a little bit of stuffing. I wouldn't do it uh, too mega. But uh, we just want to secure this in a position. And now before we continue, we want to embroider the triangle shape of, of the ear right into position. So you're going to want to choose a good side and then just uh, with short little stitches just be able to make it look like there's an actual ear going on with this before you continue and do two of these ears uh, and then move on to the next part of this tutorial. For the next part of this tutorial we're now going to focus on the tail and now you have your two paws done. We still have to do the mittens yet and we have our legs done at this point. So you'll notice that the tail is actually not on the back of the body. It's actually to the one side. You have to determine if you want it right or left. It says to do it on the right side, but again, this is your creativity. You can decide what's right for you. So we're going to be starting off with the black at the end of the tail. And because this tail gets smaller, we need to stuff this as we go. So every few rounds, stuff more yarn in, or more stuffing in there so that you can uh, be able to access that. And then at the, at the last part, we're going to then sew it to the body. So to begin the tail part section next. To begin the tail we want to do an adjustable ring just like we have been doing all along and coming up and over. I don't think I need to go that slow for you at this point. I'm sure you know what you're doing at this point. Adjustable ring and now we have to do six single crochets into the ring. So, so one, two, I do apologize for using black in a tutorial. I know it's a taboo. And three, three, 
four. This is five. And we have six. And now let's pull this ring nice and closed at this point. So just, just like so. And what I want to do then is grab another stitch marker and work my way up. I think I'm going to choose white at this point so that I can follow it. Even in the front of the studio lights, this black is hard to be able to differentiate the stitches. Though I love black and crochet, it's not always easy to tell what it is. And I'm just going to mark it with a stitch marker and then we're going to carry on to the next part of this tutorial. Okay, round number two, then every one of the stitches that we're going to start off with, you're immediately going to jump to the first one and it's going to be two single crochets in. We're going to be doing something really unique in this uh, particular project, so you just have to stay, bear with me. So we're just going to do two singles into each one of the ones going around. So if you have six going around, you'll end up with 12 single crochets by the end. Just like you so, and we're looking for the stitch marker. Again, a very helpful thing. And so this is the final stitch uh, going around. So essentially right now we have to put in our two. But what I want you to do before you finish off the two, I want you to come in around and bring on the gray that we're going to change to. And so we're going to pull through the first part, leave two on there and grab your gray and pull it through. Do not cut this black out. Just leave it because we're going to leave that on the inside as we change colors going all the way around. So we're going to carry on to round number three, four, and five. And what I want you to do, we have the gray here. I do not want you to cut the black. Just move the black so it's in front. So it's on the inside of, of this particular tail. So just grabbing now the gray, I want you to go into the very next stitch and just put the stragglers just one time only of the black and the gray into the next one underneath so it's just riding on top and now we can let the black just fall in and keep that straggler just going a few more around as you go. It just makes it easier so that you're not worried about that falling out because when we go to switch to black again within this tail the gray will already be secure and ready for you. So continuing to do one single crochet all the way around for round number three and we only have to go around three times so you can essentially at this point you can just count it out but I'm going to continue to move up my stitch marker so that I don't lose count for myself. And you have it, you might as well use it. So once we start to decrease on this project we're going to ask you to start stuffing it so that you're um, going to be filling in your tail as you go and there is the stitch marker right here so I'm just going to push it up so and then go into my final stitch so that would be round number three. So please do that. So round number three and four uh, and five are going to be all single crochet. So three is done so just go four and five and we'll meet back up in rows number se uh, six and seven. Okay so finishing up round number five at this point I got one more stitch to go. You can see my stitch marker and then what I want to do is, is start it but I don't want to stop it so I want to or I don't want to finish it. So I have two on my hook. I want to bring back the black now in style and bring it back and finish it and let the gray now fall in the inside because we're now going to start rows number six and seven using just black. And at this point what I would do as well is that I would make sure that you move up your stitch marker but also start grabbing your stuffing and starting to stuff this tail because it's easier to do it now than it is to be able to get it through a smaller space later. So just stuff a little bit just to get it to go and obviously we can put more in if we have to later. On the very final round of number seven what we have is that I want to start it and I want to change back to gray. So where we've been dragging the gray on the inside we want to pull it through and put the black on the inside again so that we can access it again a little bit later. So it's rounds number um, six and seven. So we're ready now to move on to round number eight and it's just single crochet all the way around and then we'll meet back up in nine and carry on. Okay, we're ready to move on to round number nine and remembering that we have to continually stuff. I've been stuffing off camera without really mentioning it. So I'm just keeping more and more in there. So in the next round what we need to do in round number nine is that we have to do um, two, a single crochet two together and single crochet into the next stitch four times. So the very first one that we're going to do, we're still using the gray at this point. The very first one and the next one are two together. So we're going we're gonna to start the decreasing as the tail gets smaller 
and then the next one is going to be single crochet. So I know it's kind of hard to see it in everything when it comes to all of your your stuffing but you just have to make do because that's the only way to go about it at this point. So two together uh, to decrease it and then one single crochet standing alone and do it all the way back to the stitch marker and that'll complete round number nine and we'll move on to round number ten next and we need to change the color after round number ten as well. So just finished off round number nine and simply we are going to be switching black again so don't uh, keep that off yet. Don't cut that off. So in round number 10 now we're just going to go simply around and single crochet using the gray and the very last stitch we're going to switch back to black so be prepared to do so at that time. Okay we're just finishing up round number 10 and simply just have to come in. The very last one we're now going to switch it back to black so just grab up the black. Let's bring the, the gray forward so it stays on the inside of the tail and I have stuffed more yarn or stuffing inside that tail as well and so we're now on the black at this point and for rounds number 11 and 12 single crochet each round and then change uh, to A at the end. So for two rounds please do a black and we'll meet back up in a second. Remember to keep stuffing this tail as you go. Okay we're just finishing up round number 12. This is the very last time you'll be using the black so you can safely now just uh, get rid of it now and we're just going to put it into the front and we're going to trim it right now. So we're just going to trim just a small one so that we can bury that string into position as we go. We're going to grab up the gray now to finish off the, the round number 12 uh, final stitch because we are changing color and we're going to bring that in. And so now for rows number uh, 13 uh, to all the way to 15. It's single crochet and then at the end of 15 we're going to join it uh, with the slip stitch to finalize it. So for the, for the next three rounds just continue using the gray and what I want you to do is put this black on top of the line so that when you're going up underneath uh, that you can actually trap that in position and continue to go around three more times using gray and then we're almost ready then. Uh, also please continue to stuff. This hole is going to get really small at this point. So continue to stuff and we are almost done at this point. So I'm just finishing up the tail and simply I just need to grab my yarn and I'm going to use the extra string to sew so it to the body as well. Now because that we've been going in a continuous circle that you will notice that you will have an area where the, the rings are not aligned with each other and that exists on the, the normal one as well. So in this one here because it's tighter what I would have done in retrospect is that see where it's changing here it's not aligning properly. I would turn it so that that change would be underneath. So if you're looking at it from the back side you would never see that the ring is not going all the way around or in the front side. So you do it so that it's on the bottom. So unless somebody's looking underneath your Christmas tree or looking at it from the underside they'll never be able to see the difference at this point as well. So just go in and just clean up uh, the loose ends at this point and we're going to start on the mittens next because that one is the final before you can start putting everything together. You can assemble as you go but I think it's a better off idea in order to um, assemble uh, it at the end so that you can really get an idea on how your little raccoon is going to be working. Let's begin. Now let's begin to do the mittens. The mittens are an extra piece that's put on afterward and then to simply put on the mittens all you'll need to do is just slip a, a smaller crochet hook than the one that you're using. Just grab the paw that is existing on the raccoon and pull the paw through and move it down. It's the only way to do it. So you'd hope like that kids are not going to pull this off on you. So it looks like it's pretty small and, genu and genuine. You can make many things of these uh, for the Christmas tree as well. It's actually something that you could do on the side as well. So let's uh, begin doing the mittens. This is a wine color that they've used. I'm going to use the, the, tr the traditional hot pink that I've been doing all year long. Uh, gray, white and hot pink are my colors and when you look at the raccoon you know that would totally go with my, th my theme this year. Okay to start off with the mittens we need to do an adjustable ring like we've been doing. And you'll need to make two of these. Obviously you have two paws. And let's start off with just like so and it says make an adjustable ring work six single crochets into the ring do not join blah 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 because it's the same as what we've been doing. So again one, two, three, four and five and they've been telling us to use an off white so I would choose a different uh, color of uh, uh, a stitch marker in order to use so that you can go up and down on these mittens without anybody noticing and simply just pull on the string 
so that it goes in a full circle at this point and that will finish off the first round. Let's start off round number two. We're doing two single crochet in the next single crochet and then single crochet in the next. So we just immediately jump to the first one. Off camera I put in my stitch marker just so that you're aware. So the first one is going to have two. Okay, and the next one is going to be a single crochet just like that. And then um, to start off with the mitten, to start off round number two, the first stitch is going to get two single crochets and then single crochet into the next. And uh, we simply just start off. And I've already put in my stitch marker off camera, so that's what you see there and then single crochet in the next and you just keep repeating that all the way around so the next one's going to be two in that stitch one in the next just like you see and then two in the next and then you will finish off with the final one with being one on its own just like that so it's just very easy so let's move up that stitch marker again So we're able to tell where we're going around. So let's move along to round number three. Okay, moving along to round number three, let's backtrack a little bit to round number two. The very final one that you have, you just I just want you to pull out that very last one, just a partial so that you have the one coming up and the one there. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this like the tail, so that we're going to be changing our colors from white to hot pink. And so we'll finish off the stitch just like that. So in uh, round number three, we're going to single crochet with the, the color of the white and then the very last stitch, we're going to bring back the hot pink. Make sure at this point is that hot pink is toward the center so it stays on the inside of the mitt so you never see it dragging, being dragged on the outside. So every stitch going all the way around is just one single crochet, very easy. This is round number three. I find the mitts are so adorable in this uh, particular raccoon. I think the raccoon's amazing, but I think it's the little mitts that sell it for me for this particular pattern. So we're going all the way around to the stitch marker. So we're on the stitch marker now. So when I'm at the stitch marker, I don't want to finish this stitch, but what I want to do is I want to grab the hot pink again and pull it in to finalize that stitch like so and let's bring the white back toward the center so it stays on the inside of the mitt and what we want to do as well is that we want to grab that that stitch marker on the other side and pull it up through so we know where we're where we're stopping and starting it may be obvious because you're changing colors but I don't like to take a chance because it's so easy to lose count so let's bring the white on the inside and begin round number four together Okay, round number four and five are very easy, just single crocheting around using the hot pink. And on the very last stitch of round number five, we're going to change the color back to white again. This white is just more of an accenting color going all the way around the mitts, just like so. So just single crocheting all the way around. And obviously when you get to the stitch marker, you're going to say, whoops, I've just gone all the way around, which is next. So let's move up the stitch marker as we get there. And it is really critical that you keep that white on the inside of the mitt. So you're not dragging it on the outside. And let's go one more time. This is round number five going around. I was really intimidated by the mitts, I have to say, but then once you start breaking down these steps, very easy, really, really easy. And we go all the way back to the stitch marker, which is where we are, and we do not want to finish that stitch, and we simply just want to grab up the white now and let's finish that stitch with the white because we're going to play with that color next and bring the hot pink back into the inside of the mitt. And at this point too, you obviously want to move up your stitch marker too to make sure that you're following along just right. Okay, let's begin round number six. With the white here, we just want to begin to just single crochet all the way around again. 
So that's no big deal. So let's just single crochet. I'll meet you back up. And we are going to change it back to hot pink once we get all the way around. So the white that you see within the mittens are just an accent color, just one str uh, stripe all the way around when you're going to do this particular project. So let's uh, continue to do that. Meet you back up at the stitch marker and carry on with the next part. Okay, round number six is now complete, but we need to change the color again back to hot pink. Let's bring forward the white. The white is officially done now on these mittens, so you'll just have to do a second pair uh, or second uh, set of mittens for yourself. So essentially we're going to grab the pink and finish that off. And so what I want you to do then, I want you to bury in this, this one here. So we're going to be doing two together all the way around. So just every uh, two stitches are coming together, making sure we keep that white down on the top there so that we can bury that underneath. And so basically two are being together so that we're decreasing and this is what allows the mitten to be tighter around the wrist of the raccoon without it falling off. So do that all the way around two together and then we're going to be fastening off this color and then uh, starting to do some more stitch work because we need to do the, the actual thumb that you can see within the mittens. So we now are finished. So we've gone two together and now we just want to weave in the ends. So we're just going to just finish this off and we want to do a really nice job with this as well. And what we're going to be doing next is that we're going to be embroidering a thumb onto this. So essentially I'm going to take my darning needle with these because people are going to be loving these mitts. So you know people are going to be touching it. So I want to make sure that I finish it off really quite nicely so that people are, don't start getting frays or start doing anything crazy with it. So simply just bury in your funnel around. Uh, make sure that you do not sew your your mittens shut because then you'll have a problem. You'll never be able to get the paws in. So just uh, and sew these nice. So you basically you just uh, to weave in your ends you go in one direction for a bit and then you come back and then go back into the same direction. Again I'm making sure that this opening is staying out. So our next procedure, I'm just going to finish this up and talk to you. Our next procedure now is that we have to flatten down these mitts, just push down and determine where the thumb should go. Because of the way that we did it in the very beginning, I'm going to get rid of that too, uh, is that we've gone in a continuous circle. So just like the tail, you're going to see that when we switched over. So when you're putting on these mitts on the character, you're going to want it so that the thumb is in a position so that it's one way or another. So I would do it. So when you're looking at the character, you got to determine what is the nicer way to look at these mitts uh, because of the way that it's been joined there. So let's uh, car carry on and I'm going to start to embroider on the, the thumb next. To embroider the thumb, we are just going to slip in our darning needle. And it says to go between rows three and four. Okay, and these are in between this red section here. So what I would probably do is that I don't want the change to be up at the top. I want it to be near to the bottom. So what I would want to do is that the pause, when you look at it, the thumbs will be up or down. So just visualize how it's going to be on your particular character. So when you go to start, you're just going to start off on the inside in, in the pink section. It's coming up and then down to the pink section. And I would come all the way back out so that you can into the same area so that you can fasten these off. On the other side I would create a slip knot and slip your needle through this slip knot so that it will hold it firmly in a position and then pull everything nice and tight. And so that will appear on the inside of the tie. So when you're going to embroider the thumb you just you don't want to be too tight about it. You just want to be nice and relaxed at this particular point. You just got to take your time and just continue to circle around in that same spot to build up the thickness to make it appear like a thumb is actually in the position that it should be. So just coming around the same stitches so you can just kind of poke out through the bottom as well. And just go around a few times to make it look like there's a thumb. See, I would have thought in my and the directions before doing this is that the thumb was something that was added to the glove as part of the shaping. I didn't realize it would be embroidered like this. So you see I'm not pulling it too tight but I'm creating a thumb look because obviously there's no thumb on the paws. 
So there you go. So then you would have a nice thumb and then finish that off on the inside to call that quits. And then please do two of these and then you can insert it onto the paw at a, at a later time. Okay, it's now time to do the fringing area here and on the mittens you have the thumb on the top and then you have this fringe and this fringe really adds a lot of character to it. So let's uh, begin according to the instructions that we want to do loops uh, that are about four inches long. Because I'm using a thicker hook I'm just going to make it so that it's um, it's a little bit longer than four inches so that I can play with it just like so. So you want to do it so that you have a total of four strands and you'll do this per uh, mitten just like so. So what we want to do is just continue to cut these so you have four strands and the way that I did it, it just makes a lot of sense so that you have four equal lengths. So what we want to do is grab two strands together and we're going to go in separately. If you've noticed on the back of this glove that we've gone in two separate areas so the two has gone through here, two through the other side. So on our mitten here, this is a great way of hiding all this, this stuff at the bottom as well, is that we're gonna just going to slip in our hook to the bottom section. Just like so, and we want to grab two strands only. Like so, and what we want to do is equalize them before, and then grab both all of those strings and pull it through that loop. And what I would do then is immediately go and do the other one. So just grab the next stitch that's in line, just waiting to be used. Grab the next piece, pull through, and then e make sure they're equal. And so now what you want to do now is untangle these. So you see how the plies are all together? You want to do it so that all the plies are then separated to make it puffy, just like so. So that's how you would do a mitten. And so just please do two of these and we'll meet back up and carry on with this project. The best way to get the fluff at the bottom of the mitten is actually just to brush your yarn we all know what happens when a brush hits it. It separates the plies and then you have a nice generous length and then you can trim it afterward to get the, the sizes that you want. So I would put this flat on a table, maybe on a piece of paper, and just brush it until you get to the, the idea that you want to make it nice and fluffy at the bottom and then trim afterward. So we're now ready to put everything together and essentially we have all the components here of the raccoon ready to be put onto the doll. We have actually uh, marked all of our stitches here on the face to be able to start and just start with one element and then start working your way around. The nose is stuffed. Before doing the eye part, make sure that you put on your safety eyes first because you'll never get the back ends uh, onto that if you don't put it on first. So the safety eyes are actually right directly behind the eye patches here and not behind the actual um, head itself. So begin to use the d diagram to sew everything in together. The hands uh, basically they don't want you to do it so that the hands are facing straight down like this. They want the hands coming in forward like so. And you can always use a little bit of wire inside if you wanted to really stage up the hands as well. So that's something that can be done for you. So now here's the fun part. So now you get to put things together and start sewing it together. And now that you have all of these loose strings, these are the strings that are going to bring everything together. And I would start off with doing the face first and then start uh, working your way down from that point.